Okay, let's get into uh, another page real quick. So um, let's talk movies, K. Lou. Um, Deep in it was that your uh, first movie that you put out? Deep in it was my first movie that I put out. I, the first, but let me go back. Let's go back a little bit. All right. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go back a little bit. Um, this was uh, 90, 98. Okay. 98. Let's go back a little bit so I can just tell you a couple of things. 98, I, me and Master P was riding back from his house to Baton Rouge, back to the studio. And he said to me, hey, you know, this ain't going to last. You ought to start your label. You, you, you know, you, you get you an artist. I put it out. And let's, and let's see what happens. So the act that I had, um, Derek Shields, Mr. Robodope, may he rest in peace, he's not with us any longer. He was an artist, he was the artist that I had at the time. I mean, he was dope, man. He, but he kept getting in trouble and kept going to jail. And every time people would ask me, you got your artist? I said, no. He said, man, you gotta hurry up and get your artist. He was in jail. So I ended up getting one of um, Sick Witted artists, Lil Gip. You know, and I end up signing him to my label and I end up putting this project out on top of the world. And Master P named him Lil Italy. That's where the name come from. And then um, we put that record out. It, it did OK. Didn't do as good as it would have done if I had to follow Master P advice and did it a year before when everything was going gold and platinum. But I put it out in 99 toward the, when everything was starting to go down. Uh, right before Cash Money came out, but um, but I would say from there, all the connections I had, everything that I built up, it was easy for me to go to these big record labels and get a deal and get money out of them. You know, publishing deal, record deals. I had my own label that recorded all my own stuff because I wasn't worried about any money. I had money, and I had. Um, Don P, he was a solo act. I had Rob G, J Sweets, they were brother act, and I had Buddha Mac. But all together, they were called a Hands Full of Hooligan. And a quick story with that Hands Full of Hooligan, I took it to MCA Records. And um, Randy Jackson from American Idol, he was the senior VP of a and at the time. And he heard it, he loved it, he wanted to sign everything. And from there, he said, yeah, well, I'm going to New York. When I come back, I'm going to send you this deal memo. Deal memo in the record business is like a handshake. You get a deal memo, that's a done deal. So when I come back on Monday, I'm going to send you a deal memo. We're going to do this. Put, this, put your act out, and uh, we're going to go from there. So Monday come, Naeem Ali, who's the a r for MCA, working under uh, Randy. Oh, man, I got this deal memo I'm about to send you. Oh, cool. I'm, looking, I'm thinking money, eight. 800 to a million, you know, at the time. Here come the deal memo. It comes out of my fax machine. I'm reading it, and I'm reading it. it says, Buddha Mac name only. I said, what the? Oh, my God, they only want Buddha Mac. And I had to break it to the other guys, man, and I know it hurt them real bad, you know, that they changed their mind and, and they wanted Buddha. But anyway, I ended up getting Buddha signed to MCA. We worked on her record. 40, 40 was on the first single. And I guess it just wasn't meant to be because the, right before they got ready to put, release the record, Randy gets fired because he has a, a argument with the president of the label because he wanted them to spend more money in the urban department. And, and I guess they had differences and they fired him. And when Randy left, everything that he signed left. So they dropped us. They told me to keep all the money they gave me, keep your music. And, you know, and from there, that was it, man. A lot of things could have happened great from there, but okay. Yeah, that's, that's a tragic story. What, yeah. Um, what were you saying led before up to that? that? Um, I yeah. was asking about Deep in It. Oh, yeah, the movie. And, um, oh, yeah, the movie business. So you were riding with P in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. He gives you the, uh, the spiel on you should start your old record label. Yes. At what point in time, after all the success, do you decide, you know what, I think I want to take it to the next level? Because you could have just stopped with the music. Yeah, I mean, up until, you know, I'm still doing music today, but I'm not doing, I'm not chasing the music today. I'm not chasing beats no more. I don't do beats no more because to me, ain't no money in beats. You know, a lot of guys, they doing their own thing. You know, they got these sample packs. It's just 
to me, there's no musicianship. No one's really playing. There's a few guys that I know play. I play my own stuff. When somebody asks me to do something, I play everything. And um, so I said, you know, uh, I want to do something else, challenge myself. So a friend of mine that used my studio, Philip Brome, he, he did a movie. He did his first movie, and it was called Easy Money. And he did it. And it kind of influenced me, inspired me to do my own thing. So I got a, uh, I knew a guy that had called me, wanted me to score some of his commercials. His name was Jamel Brinson. He had the equipment. He had the knowledge. So we talked, and we decided to, to, to start a partnership together, a company called Media Stream Pictures. And we produced our first, um, our first uh, movie film called Deep In It. Through the help of Master P's guidance, you know, because Master P did Foolish, he did I Got the Hook Up, One, he did, uh, he was already in the game. So he had a lot of connections. He checked it out. Him and Jamie Foxx watched the movie. Jamie Foxx thought it was cool, but he turned it down because he said my acting could have been better. I ain't got no money to pay anybody my first movie. I'm not going to spend millions of dollars. I'm just getting into this. So I just did it mediocre just to see if I could get one done. I got it done. It's, it's making money on Tubi. It was, it's on Comcast. And I got the bug. So now I'm on my third movie. The second movie, Faded. Hope to show you a picture of Faded right now. But uh, that'll be out in, uh, what, the end of March, early April. And I'm working on another movie, which is going to be a horror movie. We're writing it right now. And I'm really excited about that movie. But that's how I got into it, just to challenge myself. And I'm loving the film, uh, the film industry. So it just gives me another something to look forward to every day. I love writing, you know, writing stories. I went on vacation to Turks and Caicos. And I sat down and came up with the idea for the next, for this horror movie. And, and um, Jamel and my daughter, who's a part of the writing team, we writing the script right now as we speak, and it's coming out really, really good. I think it's gonna really be the one. But that's that's how I got in the, mu in the, in the movie business. That's dope, that's real dope. How do you go about your um, selection for actors and, and actresses? Do you just scout through Instagram or do you have people like act in front of you. Oh, you, de oh you, you definitely. I, I've been the backstage where you, you, you go in there, you check their database of actors. I've got recommendations from the, uh, Jamel, my business partner, who knows a few people that knows people. And for, for deep in it, we, we end up using a lot of people that I know. Uh, didn't have a lot of experience. So, uh, but I knew uh, I had a lot of rappers in that movie because rappers, Believe it or not, our rappers are really good actors because you, they know they, they they know how to say their lines because when they rapping, they acting. Really, some of them, and uh, a lot of a lot of actors did a great job. Like Miko Kaki, who played uh, Dre, and he did a great job. He surprised me. Philip Brome, uh, he surprised me. He did a he was the leader of the of their of his group mob. He did a great job. A lot of people did a great job acting. But Jamie Foxx said, I could have had better acting. Okay. But for this next movie, I got better acting. You know, paid a little more money for the acting because I'm experienced a little bit now. I got one movie under my belt, getting better with it. And the acting is a lot better. We just learned a lot. And you're going to be able to see the growth in that movie. But um, backstage, recommendations, uh, that's how you find actors. You, we did Zoom because it was during the pandemic. But for Deep In It, we did, we did live auditions. And we, you have them come in, you read. We were at Salesian High School. They let us use the cafeteria. Shout out to Salesian. Salesian was so helpful and so supportive of us. They let, let us use the whole campus, the whole classrooms, offices, whatever, they, whatever we needed. Salesian said, go ahead, you got it. You know, and... And um, they really helped it. Without them helping us and giving us the okay, it would have been a tough movie to do. But they were great. They were great.